our challah bread is raising and we've got this covered up with a cloth I want to talk about what I did when I actually added the ingredients for Jewish tradition there are prayers to be said as you add some of the ingredients and right before you raise it all right so we're going to go over that now so you don't want to forget if you're going to do real Jewish tradition challah bread this is the tradition and how they make it when you add your yeast to the bread machine or to the bowl if you're mixing it by hand or in the or in the KitchenAid mixer or what have you all right when you add the yeast yeast is talking about it's a riser it helps your bread go from that elastic glutens after they've relaxed in the bread and the yeast helps that to rise it puts gas bubbles in there and it helps it to rise and the sugar added to the yeast helps it to rise so the sweetener helps the yeast to activate to proof okay the prayer that they say at this point when they're adding the yeast to the bread machine or to the mixer or to the hand you know the big bowl where they hand mix it uh, most challah breads are hand mixed in a great big bowl I mean it makes a lot I mean I had to really cut down a lot of my old recipes and old given recipes from ages ago in order to make it suit this DAC machine okay and it seems to be working it's raising in there it looks great actually but this is a prayer that I was taught to say by an older Jewish woman who was teaching me how to make challah bread years ago it was an old neighbor all right and she said that she prayed as she added as she was getting ready to add the yeast she blessed the yeast by saying as I add this yeast I say this prayer dear Lord help us rise in abundance help us rise to be our best persons that we can be and help my family and my friends rise to the challenges that are put before them as well and then she would add the yeast as she said that prayer isn't that beautiful there's nothing wrong with spending some time with the Lord in the kitchen and praying over your food and bring showing that representation of raising the bread and how God helps us rise to the occasions that we need to rise to we need to rise up to the challenges that the world gives us uh, God told Cain you can overcome it and that means we can too we can too we can overcome sin we can overcome the chaos of the world life's going to throw us some hardball turns but we can overcome it until the day that we see the lord's face we can overcome and that's what we're doing here we're rising up uh, in god's name we're being humble and allowing him to help us do it now next of course you saw me add the sweeteners the brown sugar the honey and the sugar before you add the first sweetener or sugar to your challah bread you're going to say another prayer and you're going to ask the Lord to bring sweetness and good things into your life and into the lives of your children your parents your grandparents your friends your neighbors your enemies everyone help them have a little sweetness in their life and then you add your sugar now while the bread is raising and it as the yeast proves it is charity of God to bless our table and that's what it's doing now you can see inside of here it is raising and what I'm going to do now is that we have what we call a charity jar here okay I described that a minute ago it's just a charity jar all I did was just cut a slit in here with a knife uh, you can get any kind of bank whatever um, this goes to charity when it's full and you're going to take your coin every time your bread raises every time you make bread you're going to take your coin okay anytime you make a bread or something with a leavening in it you're going to take your coin and you're going to put it into the slot my slots a little tough right here and you're going to put your coin into the charity jar just like that and the reason why we do the charity jar the charity jar itself says that when we give charity that you add a quarter to the bank and you 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 pray about charity you talk to someone else about charity if they're in the, in the kitchen helping you make bread 
talk to them about charity and have them point, put a coin in as well. Kids love doing this and it's a good way to teach them how to give charity. When we give, it opens the gates to heaven, they, the Jewish people will say. To give its charity in return when our bread raises and it turns out well. So we give charity to others and then God may bless our bread and help it to rise and the yeast be active and good and the sweetener working you know, sweetly uh, in our lives, to sweeten our lives and sweeten other people's lives. It helps us to rise to the challenges that are put before us. And by giving in charity, we help others as well. So it's about comforting others. So giving, it benefits everyone. And when the bank is full, you donate it to charity. It's just that simple. Children can do it and it's not a very big jar. It'd probably only take you maybe six months to fill this up if you make a lot of homemade bread, maybe even faster. Biscuits, everything counts. Anything that you love eating in. In this case, it's cheap. And then they say, let the dough raise as God blesses it. Amen. So let the dough raise as God blesses it. And then it's going to raise here, and it is raising. It looks great. So God has blessed our bread, and we have talked about adding the yeast, the sugar, and as it raises, the charity. All right. So we'll come back when the bread is raised, because when the bread's raised, we're going to take off that first egg size, roll size bit. We're going to roll it up fold it in some uh, aluminum foil, and we're gonna throw it in the oven. We're gonna let it burn, okay? We're gonna let that piece burn. And you're asking me, why would I waste perfectly good bread? Well, there's a reason for making the Sabbath bread. This is a challah bread, and if it's made for the Sabbath, is a Sabbath keeping. They make it ahead of time, you can freeze it, uh, whatever. But they do this so they don't have to perform work on Saturday on the Sabbath. So they do all of this work on Thursday or Friday, and then they don't have uh, to do anything on Saturday. It is the Lord's day of rest. And as Christians, we agree, Saturday is the Sabbath and it is the day of rest. The only difference between Christians and the Jewish tradition is on Sunday, we celebrate the atonement. And when you take this, uh, this ball size, this egg size piece of dough out, and you uh, pray over it, you, you pray quietly to yourself. That's the one prayer that you pray quietly to yourself, okay? So when you're holding that dough that you're about to burn and wrapped in the foil, you pray over it and you pray a personal prayer to the Lord for yourself. It's, it's your time and your prayer with the Lord. You can take as long as you want, okay? And you pray. And that's your, that's your prayer with the Lord as you're holding that one piece of dough. And then when you're done, you say, Amen. You, you make that covenant between you and God. All men is a signature between you and God, a covenant between you and God. He's heard you, he's heard your prayer, and you've announced that you have said it and you've spoken it in the needs that you need. And this zikah, this prayer, it is very important when making challah bread for the Sabbath. Now, they will take, and when they separate, uh, the rest of the uh, bread dough, or even that one bread ball dough, they'll also recite the um, the bracha. The bracha is just where they're declaring it to be hala. And hala, and I can't do the Jewish twirl of the throat of the tongue. So if there's a Jewish lady out there that wants to hala, see the hala, it's like saying ah oh, bibi. <laughs> I can't do it. My husband can do it in Aramaic, but I cannot, or Arabic, but I cannot do the, um, the hala. I guess I did it that time, but because I'm not used to talking Hebrew, my husband speaks Hebrew and Greek, but because I'm not used to it, I can't get my throat to do that. So now we're going to say uh, that prayer. So you'll know it when the bread dough comes out and we make that, we're going to say this prayer. So I want you to memorize it now. So you'll be ready for it when we get ready to pull, start pulling, you know, that egg size ball, that first ball out that we're going to burn. We say, blessed are you, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to separate challah. Commanded us to separate challah. And then you put the tuna foil and you toss it in the oven. To me, 
when you have traditions like this that you're teaching your children, whether you're Jewish or not, Jesus was a Jew. In our faith, Jesus was a Jew. And so to be able to pick up some of those Jewish um, festivities and holidays and things and be able to uh, enjoy the Sabbath. That's just a little bit about Jewish tradition. And if you have a special Jewish tradition that you and your family uh, still maintain or that you remember, let us know in a comment box below. We would love to give your tradition from uh, your religion a try as well. We would love to um, to share with others how others live and how they how they how they how they're motivated and how they're um, you know how things work in their household and their family. Um, my family was raised around the kitchen table and we were raised to pray before we ate and we still do that today. Um, I feel guilty if I forget to pray. Even if we're out to dinner, we always pray. I feel guilty if I forget. I feel like my food's not blessed. You get in the habit of doing it and then you feel guilty if you don't. So, um, but no, just leave us a fun comment below and uh, let us know some of your uh, holidays, festivities, or something special you remember celebrating in your faith. All right, no one's here is judging anybody. I'm a doctorate of divinity. I've studied every religion. So I find this very fun and entertaining. And as a Christian, I find celebrating the Jewish holidays is very important. Jesus, in my religion, Jesus was a Jew. So that's, um, that's why I'm doing this. I wanna get back to what Jesus and his family did as they were Jewish and how they celebrated their festivities, holidays, the Sabbath, he was the age of 30. He only ministered uh, out in the public for three years, for the most part, only three years. And trust me, he changed the world. In those three years, he changed the world and he fulfilled hundreds of prophecies. So we're going to be right back. Today is we're talking about uh, the Jewish festivity and Sabbath bread, the Sabbath, the Sabbath bread. And we're talking about um, challah, uh, spelled chala but pronounce either kala or hala, okay? Let's see. To um, kind of go over what hala means to the Jewish people. You know, it's not just the name of a bread. It is a very important part of their culture. And I think that's when you're gonna cover someone else's uh, culture or their recipe, you need to cover that culture. You need to cover that faith if that's what's behind it. And that's what we're doing here today, all right? So give a little charity jar, leave a quarter, and just remember, Jesus was a Jew. We love you. We'll be right back, and we're going to teach you how to braid a five plate. The little strings, the little strings of dough are called plates, P-L-A-I-T, all right, plate. And we're going to show you how to do a five plate braid today, okay? Hala, five braid. We'll be right back when our dough rises. Let's peek in on it. Oh, that's raising nicely. We'll be right back. Keep it covered. It's cold out. 